Greetings ladies and gentle fish and today I thought we'd take a look at a potential upcoming change I believe um, and one that seems to have gone slightly more under the radar than oh they're changing artillery again and oh they're changing HE and maybe we'll get new crew skills and all that jazz. So it seems Wargaming have decided to well as far as I can work out revisit the idea of low tier matchmaking and whether we want to protect the newbies. And this is something they did a few years ago, for those of you who've been playing the game a while. Um, but it kind of seemed to sort of work, but seemed to sort of fade away a bit. And Anyway, what I wanted to do is have a look at the article they've actually put out. Because there seem to be various people having read various bits of this and getting the information third hand. And then complaining about stuff. And So I just thought we'd have a look at what um, Wargaming are actually saying on the subject. So... This is the webpage. Greetings, Commanders. It's not always easy for new players to get used to the game, learn the battle mechanics, and show decent performance, especially if they find themselves in matches with experienced Commanders, the random battle matchmaker, and the introduction of AI players at lower tiers helps novices play in more comfortable battles and hone their skills faster. And straight away, um, someone will read that and go, wait, AI? AI? Well, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, so for those who don't know, there are... There is AI that turns up on some of the smaller servers, uh, Southeast Asia, for example, if there is a very low population count. And they, if the matchmaker's struggling, it tries to populate the game with a couple of bots, basically. Um, but we're going to come back to that. So, helping novices hone their skills. Novices in low-tier random battles, tier 1 to 5, will find themselves matched against fellow novices to ensure they play in more comfortable battles. So essentially the idea here is that if you are new to the game, you will be playing other people who are new to the game. You won't be up against, for example, me, with almost 40,000 battles played and having been playing this game for the best part of a decade at this point. So a player is considered to be a novice if they have not played a single battle in a researchable tier 7 or higher vehicle in any game mode. If they show good performance in battles with novices, they will be assigned the status of a regular player. If they purchased a tier 7 to 8 premium vehicle but continue to fight in low tiers, they will still be considered a novice. So, in order to be considered a novice, you must not have played a battle in a researchable tier 7 vehicle. If you get thrown a tier 7 or higher vehicle as a result of a... Um, uh, a rental, like maybe you get the Eagle, which I think can now be a rental, um, for a short period of time and you play that. It's not a researchable vehicle, so that doesn't count. So if you haven't done that and you stay playing, in terms of tech tree tanks at least, you stay playing tiers 1 to 6, you will still be considered a new player and the matchmaker will try and throw you against other new players. The bit about if they show good performance in battles with novices, you'll be assigned the status of a regular player. That basically sounds like it's there to try and stop people seal clubbing. The whole thing here is basically we don't want very experienced players just going down to tier 2 and beating the new players who don't know what they're doing round the face because that's not fun for the newer players and I think that's fair enough. Um, we're going to come back to the idea of smurfing in a sec for anyone who's kind of going, ah, but planning to come back to that. If a novice enters a battle using low tier, tiers 1 to 5 vehicles, the matchmaker will try to assemble the battle in a separate queue involving only novices on both teams. But if there are not enough novices to create two full teams, the matchmaker will try to add regular players to those specific novice battles. If they enter a battle using a tier 6 vehicle as a novice, they will instantly be placed in a standard random battle queue with regular players. So, this is only going to affect you if you're playing, so by the way, I haven't read this article before, so I might sort of make mistakes as I go through. If a novice enters a battle using low tier, tier 1 to 5 vehicles. So, in order to avoid, or in order to, for the matchmaker to try and put you against other newbies only, you want to stick playing tier 1 to 5. Okay? Um, but you can play a tier 6 tank. The matchmaker will still consider you a new player, but if you're playing a tier 6, you will get put into a queue with everyone else. So if you want to not be put in that queue, play tier 1 to 5, if you're a new player. okay. 
There are five maps for Tier 1 to 3 vehicles, Mines, Himmelsdorf, Abbey, Ensk and Steps, which will be randomised regardless of the opponents a player will face in battle. Novice, Regulars or AI. All other maps are available for battles involving Tier 4 and higher vehicles. So this bit is basically they've simplified what maps are available at what tiers. Because at the moment they have this sort of weird stepping thing where you get more maps as you go up the tech tree. Now it's just there are five maps, Tiers 1 to 3, Tier 4 and higher, everything is available. Okay. AI players at lower tiers. Our priority is to make sure that novices play against fellow novices so they can adapt to the game more easily. Depending on the server, time of day and the current state of the queue, the matchmaker may not have enough players to form equal and competitive teams in tier 1 to 5 matches. Adding AI controlled tankers helps us quickly get players into battle and allows the matchmaker to assemble battles faster. On highly populated servers, players will be less likely to encounter AI, but it may still happen from time to time. We want the presence of AI to be completely transparent, therefore AI players are distinguished from regular players um, by having a slightly different vehicle icon and also they have colons surrounding their nicknames. Um, here are other notes to note about battles with AI players. Dealing damage to and destroying AI will reward players with the same amount of XP they would receive for damaging and destroying non-AI. And just like in regular battles, players can still get achievements and whatnot. AI players will only be present in those rare novice battles involving tier 1 to 5 vehicles when the matchmaker lacks sufficient novice and or regular players to form full, equal and competitive teams. Such matches involving AI players should be relatively infrequent, depending on the region, time of day and number of players online. It is not possible to view AI player statistics after the battle. So what does all this mean? Well this is actually interesting because it's firstly it sounds like they're trying to do something very similar to what they did a few years ago so the sort of newbie matchmaking thing a few years ago was essentially the game would match new players with new players as much as was possible if it was struggling to form a game against new players then you would find yourself as a newbie against anyone else so it sounds like what this system is going to do is priority one we're going to pl match new players with new players. If this is not possible, priority two, we're going to match new players with as many new players as we can and then fill out the roster with regular tankers. If this is not possible, priority three, we will fill out the roster with bots. Um, now I've heard some people complain about this going, I don't want to play against bots, blah 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 blah. If you're a more experienced player, this does not affect you as far as I can see at all and also if you um, th this would only come into play at when the server populations are very low if you're on the Russian or EU servers that's probably going to be at like 3 a.m. and that's about it where I think this might affect people a little bit more is on a server like uh, let's say the US server where player populations are a bit lower to start with but this does not mean that if you're an experienced player and you jump in a tier 3 tank you're going to be against bots that, well, that is not what this is saying, anyway. Okay. Um, improving the battle experience. Uh, these matchmaker changes are a win-win for both novices and regular players. They will help us maintain the fair and competitive spirit of the game and reduce the difficulty curve, match more experienced players with skilled opponents, and decrease the queue time for all players. So, there's a couple of... Uh, just to put play my cards on the table. Having just read this, to me, it seems like a good idea. Um, I have no great desire, personally to be finding myself up against a guy, you know, who's got 10 games played, just unlocked a tier 3, or tier 4, or tier 5, or whatever. I, I have no desire to play against those people. I don't think they should be playing against me, if at all possible. Um, a couple of critiques I have heard of it. One, I don't want to play against bots. Well, as I've already said, as far as I can work out, that would just be a way of populating um, games with new players, not experienced, new players at... Um, low server population times. So as an experienced tanker, the only way you're going to be fighting bots is if there is such a low server population that the matchmaker tries to fill out a roster that has new players with other new players, can't, fills out as many as it can, then fills out as many as it can with experienced players, then fills out some with bots. That's the only way you're going to fight them. Fine, whatever. Um... I've also heard people go, well, this will just encourage smurfing. For anyone who doesn't know what smurfing is, it's a colloquial term for starting a new account and well, with the specific in purpose of clubbing the seals, 
basically. Um, I don't think that's going to be much of a problem because I, to me, it seems preferable to have someone clubbing seals with an entirely fresh account than someone clubbing seals with their seven skill crew that they've put all of their time, effort and money into, which is what we potentially have at the moment. So, to me, this seems like an upgrade, as far as I can see, but I'd be curious to see what you lot think. So, by all means, go and have um, a look at the article. It's just on the uh, World of Tanks uh, website. Um, your quick bit of Google Foo should be able to find it for you. Um, go and check it out, see what you think, or just go back and have a look at what I've just told you from it. I don't know any more about it than you do. Um, let us know what you think. I think it seems like a good idea, but I guess the devil is, as usual, in the detail. Anyway, that's all I was going to go through today. So, with all that said and done, as ever, I wish you very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.